All right, folks, welcome back to the Marshall Football Walk on Dynasty. We are in our last game of the season, Senior Day. They are 5-6, and six, but they're a B overall, so we'll probably get smacked in the face. We got two seniors, Marcus Hopkins, a Juco. Only had him for two years, but he's our starting corner. Hopefully, he can pull something out of his ass. And Greg Lewis, one of the walk-ons, is a senior. He's our backup end at both spots, so he, hopefully he'll get in the rotation, but there's no guarantees. They're 84 overall. We're sitting here at our usual 68. We got quite a few prospects coming in, a kicker and a punter. That's interesting. Their starting corner is out. We'll see if that affects the game in any way. It's cold as hell out here. I got a stupid jacket on just because I'm an idiot, but it's cold as hell. November in Huntington in a nighttime game. <laughs> Good run. We'll try to establish this run game. Problem is, they're better than us at every position, so it's going to be an uphill battle. But we've been here before. Ethan Riley, nice snag, nice pass. And what is the flag on now? Going to go ahead and give us a clipping penalty because, uh, just why not? We, I can tell EA. EA is just giving me a vibe right now that they got an issue with me. Jason Sanchez overthrown. Not ideal. And Carlos Jackson drops it. It was tight coverage, but we're going to go ahead and go for it here. I know it's kind of unnecessary, but I feel like EA has chosen we're going to lose this game anyway, so we might as well just go for it. And, uh, yeah. And we'll fumble it, too. Nice. Yep. Like I said... EA's decided we're losing this game, not much we can do, but just accept our fate and uh, try to counteract what the gods are doing. Like, you know, obviously we've only been playing for a couple minutes, but like, you can just get a sense, like a sixth sense when things aren't going to go your way, you know? It's just, it, it, it's built inside of you. Turn around, Nathan Stewart, out there looking like a lost sheep out in a field somewhere, eating a twig or something quick screen and we embarrass ourselves out there luckily he trips on a blade of grass just an embarrassment out here we got caught in a bad position didn't have time to switch over tough work and he just grabbed a scooter and just scored easily there it was like we weren't even playing defense Ethan Riley, nice little drag there. We'll take it. Third and one. Easy work. Jampy staying up, going for 16. Nice little ripped off run there. Todd Daniel staying on his feet, going for a nine. That was some talented work out of the walk on. Gonna bring Dom Wilson's gluttonous ass in to hopefully get us a first down here, and he'll get it for us. Ran into somebody's ass, but. That's typical, and we get the first down. Third and inches, we're going to go ahead and trust in Dom Wilson, the fullback, and he's going to get in. He is getting right to the front of that line at Chipotle. With his big-ass frame, he just knocks everybody away, and then everyone just walks away in terror at his gluttonous ass because he cannot be stopped at this juncture. Man's got that speed to the outside, and we get tripped up at the end. Completely embarrassing. You know, I didn't really show you guys any of that drive because it was just us getting eviscerated. I mean, we've seen that enough, so I figure you guys get the point. Sanchez broke open late. Didn't really have much of a choice, but good stuff. Dom Wilson gets us that first down. Critical third down conversion. What a dime to Ethan Riley. He was open for a while, but, you know, our brain has a hamster in it that's going about a mile an hour, so it took us a while, but Ethan Riley, nice little fade away. Vince Randall just running folks over. He treats them like, like he's playing in, you know, the backyard with his nephews or something, just knocking those folks down, embarrassing them. Seth Jones shrugs off a man. I think he was a defensive tackle, but he just threw him off like he was nothing. 
and converts that one for us. Honestly, he had to because their man coverage was so tight, nobody was open. See if we can get a little bit of room here. And Jampy's going to get a horse collar tackle. Where is the call, ref? And we get 2,000 rushing yards for the season, 400 XP. That'll go a long way in the war efforts. They have a heavy front, but we're going to just try Don Wilson again. And he bulldozes over a man for his second touchdown of the day. Every fast food joint in a three-mile radius is shaking in their boots right now because post-game... I know it's dark out, but everybody has to stay open. There's a Waffle House very close, and uh, that's that. We tie the game back up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll bring you guys in if anything interesting happens on defense. They're probably just going to dice us all the way down the field, and uh, I kind of want to save everyone's eye virginity so they don't, you know, look embarrassed. We get a sack or a TFL or something there. Uh, yeah, that was pathetic, um, and they're going to take the lead right before half. I'm sorry, guys, we just can't get a stop on defense. I honestly feel like just simulating the rest of this game because there ain't nothing we can do on defense. They're just pushing our shit in and uh, not apologizing. Vince Randall's going to get a quick money hit. We're going to call a timeout. I mean, really all we can do is call four verts and just hope somebody gets open. Uh, and that's that. Riley is open. Just standing there, chilling. We got six seconds, five seconds. Gonna go ahead and call another timeout. We'll go ahead and try to get a field goal here. I know it's you kind of want a touchdown there, but we gotta take what we can get. We only had 20 seconds to work with. If you just see the lanes they got open, there's no shot we get to stop. Nate Noel's got to have at least, well, not even 100 yet. Usually, things are worse than that at this point of the game for us. On Bailey, we finally kind of stopped their run, although he's just literally rolling on the ground getting more yards. I don't understand that logic. Yep, like I said, not much we can do. Rayshon Lewis, that's considered a TFL. I'll take it. Wow, what a stop by Scotty Watkins on to get him to fourth and inches. I can't believe we made that stop. Going to go ahead and for a field goal here, make it a seven-point game. Wow, our first time being successful in our lives. Carlos Jackson, first time getting him involved. It's 4th and 10, we should obviously punt, but like I said, we're just going to come out of here and just cheat. I, I don't need, Even if we don't get this, I really don't care. Uh, they just leave it wide open, and Vince Randall, they send a blitz. It is what it is. Dampy throwing people off, fighting for all those yards. Jason Sanchez has a ton of room. Ooh, he was close to taking that one. Fifteen big ones. Seth Jones walks down Easy Street, over-pursued the read option. We're going to tie it back up. I'm proud of the team for the fight because I can tell EA didn't want us to win this one. But we're hanging around. Uh, they're the better team, but I'm proud. Good tackle by Jerry Turner because I thought we were getting lit up. Good TFL by Scotty Watkins. Oh, you see, we get a good play, and then we follow it up with something like that. Just getting eradicated, eviscerated down the field. And we're out there with the user TFL with Derek Bailey, Sean Bailey's brother. He's out there crawling on the ground. For what reason, I have no idea. Great tackling. Gotta be an interception, Scotty Watkins to end the year. Just go down, buddy. That was what we needed on defense. Jason Sanchez just burnt that man. We'll take 24 yards. That's gonna help out tremendously.
third and six, we don't end up getting it. The route was too shallow. That one's on me, but I think we got to go for it here. Oh no, what just happened? We turned it over, we got three yards. There's no way that's not a first down. Yeah, I don't know how he got out of that, but Rayshon Lewis with another TFL. Don't know how he broke three tackles. That uh, astonishes me. Like, like, what? <laughs> I'm going insane here, if you haven't noticed. Easy touchdown for him. Seven yards slant. Vince Randall again. They're sending blitzes. Don't have enough coverage out there. I'm going to exploit it. Carlos broke his leg there, but gets us that first. Carlos Jackson cooked his man, gets in the end zone a lot quicker than we would have wanted. We went for two, didn't get it. Uh, Marco is stunned, so am I, but, you know, I, to be honest, really didn't feel like wasting time and doing a overtime thingy, so we figured we'd just do that. It was a tough competitive game. They were a lot better than us. And, uh, but I'm still proud of the team. Stats on the day, Seth Jones, 29 of 35, one touchdown. Pretty good day from him. Jampy, a very good day as well. 90 yards, no touchdowns. Seth Jones got himself a rushing touchdown, and Dom Wilson got himself two. Vince Randall leads the team with receiving with 93 yards. Jason Sanchez continues his solid work. Even Ethan Riley stepping in. Carlos Jackson got himself a touchdown. Nathan Stewart and Marcus Hopkins lead the team with tackles. TFL-wise, Rayshon Lewis got two, Derek Bailey and Scotty Watkins each got one. Interception-wise, Scotty got our lone interception. We'll go ahead and get the kitchen sink with our one upgrade point. We just signed Nathan Young, a halfback. We got Tim Reed, a defensive tackle. Kind of going to be a depth piece. He's not necessarily at a spot where he'll be, he'll be the starter, but he's got a decent skill set. JC Williams, another two-star corner. A lot of these guys, to be honest, are rough talent right now. Reggie Jackson, the outside linebacker, he's got some ability. He might be in the rotation. Decent uh, abilities there, as you can see. Nothing spectacular, though. Robert Allen, another tackle. Another more of a depth piece. And Derek Stevens also, kind of the same situation, just a depth guy right now. Gerald Lewis got an upgrade here D at DC. We'll go ahead and into the corner stuff, try to get that man and press up. Every little bit helps, and Jake Marshall will continue with the quarterback stuff, and then we'll eventually go probably into running, maybe. On whom's authority? Coastal Carolina passes us. We won the head-to-head. -head. I understand they got one less conference loss, but it just seems a little bit slimy. <sighs> All right, so we're playing in the Lending Tree Bowl, Mobile, Alabama. Interesting. Taking on number 24, Miami. Mark Corbett, running back, he is small, 5'9", but he's just kind of a solid player. I think he'll probably be redshirted, and then that way we can kind of get him a faster development. And Fred Kimbra, if that's how you pronounce that, I'm not too linguistic, but he's from Michigan. 89 kick power, 78 accuracy. This man is just a god. There's nothing else you can say. All right, boys, so finishing up year one. We did not end on a win. It's a disappointment, but we are headed bowling. We've taken on a tough Miami Hurricanes team, so we're gonna do our team awards here. Now, our offensive MVP award, the Randy Moss Offensive Player of the Year award is going to go to Jampy with 1,100 yards. Multiple touchdowns, I can't keep track because I'm just that ignorant. His parents told me to never try to pronounce his last name, so I never will be. He was definitely an undervalued piece of this team. He, you know, he was the first guy in, last guy out, just practiced hard, and really was kind of the glue that held our offense together. Now, Jampy actually cannot be here to accept the award. He is at the local soup kitchen, and he is just helping the homeless because, you know, he's just a great guy. So, Jampy, offensive MVP, Randy Moss Award. He's a great kid, and we love him to death. Now we got another award, the Troy Brown 
overall team MVP award. That's kind of going to go to the most versatile player. We had everybody vote on it, all the players. So these are all your selections. The coaches had the opinions, and so did the players. And the Troy Brown all-around stud award is going to go to Jerry Turner. This man did everything for us. He was electric in the return game, helped us on the ground, scored multiple touchdowns, rushing, receiving, and it was our number two corner behind Marcus Hopkins this year. Had a very good year for year one, coming out of Fresno City Community College. You can't ask for much more, better than we deserve. So here you go. Um, take this and honor it. Put this right on your bookshelf. Well, I'd just like to thank all my teammates. You know, I've had to work on every side of the ball, defense, offense, special teams. So all the coaches that we got, Gerald Lewis really introduced me to Waffle House and KFC and all his fine establishments. You know, the good thing about it is, is we eat so much garbage that I have to work extra hard just to burn off all those calories. You know, he gives the big bucket meal you know, he gets the whole gamut and, you know, I got to work that off. So I got to, you know, run for 10 miles, but, but yeah, I'm honored to receive this award. And next year we're going for that Sunbelt championship. That's all I care about. And yeah, thank you. I salute everybody in this locker room. Now for our Vinnie Curry defensive player of the year, I think it's pretty obvious to everybody. It was almost a unanimous decision. It's going to be Stanford Chase, ladies and gentlemen. Just a fantastic season, winning national awards, putting us on the map. Led the team with TFLs, multiple interceptions, multiple forced fumbles, recoveries, impact plays. And he transferred here from Kentucky, and honestly, it's their loss. Stanford Chase, Defensive Player of the Year. Thank you, thank you. Uh... I mean, I appreciate this award, you know. Appreciate my guys out there on the field with me that do their part so I can do my part. Uh, appreciate Coach Lewis, you know, he called a plays, put us in a position to succeed, so thank you. And finally, last but not least, we have the Chad Pennington Comeback Player of the Year. That's going to go to Seth Jones. Again, almost another unanimous decision. Now you may ask, what did he come back from? And really, there's no good answer, but his entire freshman year, he was on the bench, you know, just got in at certain times, kept his head down, kept grinding even though he wasn't the starter, still showed up, still got extra reps in with the receivers and our offensive line running backs. And this year he finally got his opportunity. So Seth Jones, congratulations. You're one of the few national gems we have left in this world. Yes, sir! Look at that, bro. Comeback player of the year, yes, sir. You know, I knew all my hard work would pay off on that field, and who knows, maybe next year I'll be getting MVP, you know what I mean? But shit, uh, shout out to Coach Marshall, you know. I just want you to know that as a white man, you should know that 400 years of slavery is a lot to make up for, but oh this award is a start, so good looking out, coach. Now, after the team's award ceremony, some of the players and coaches went out to the club and doing various activities. Besides players like Todd Daniel, Seth Jones, Jampy, you know, the responsible ones, but may God have mercy on our soul and let's hope we can make it through this night unscathed. Two hours later. Carlos Jackson, our star wide receiver, also was drinking a bit too much. We drug tested him in the morning. He apparently ended up in a McDonald's parking lot with vomit all over him. So we gave him a drug test. We found cocaine and marijuana in his system, so he will be suspended until further notice. Starting out with wide receiver Ethan Riley, the young freshman. He had a bit too much to drink and split off from the group. Went to a strip club and after that, horrible things occurred. He got busted at 2 a.m. in a prostitution sting, and the following morning I had to go bail him out of jail, so that was fun, a nice way to wake up in the morning. 
And unfortunately, to all our dismay, offensive coordinator Jake Marshall was suspended by the NCAA for betting money and gambling on the games he was coaching, so he will be out also indefinitely. All right, so that'll do it for App State. The game was close. It wasn't fun. I uh, would rather have been doing anything else because uh, it just felt like one of those games EA was going to make kind of very difficult for us. Went for it at the end, and we just kind of shit the bed but it is what it is we have a chance to beat a top 25 team or get creamed there's definitely a few ways this game could go but that's going to do it for this episode i'll see everybody in the next one let's just all calm down and see what we can accomplish next time